So this park train was built by a miniature train company and she was born in 1957. She was at the Birmingham Zoo for the first part of her life, then an individual owned her and then she was acquired by the museum. She was in pretty, pretty abysmal condition. One of the locomotives and two of the cars were refurbished and put into service here at the museum and were able to give guests a uh, two loop ride around our approximately third mile track loop and people love it. The park train has been in service 63 years at least, on and off. Carried a lot of passengers, made a lot of people happy, but it's, uh, it eventually, like all machines do, they wear out. Christine, who will refer to uh, our locomotive, Christine's had heart problems for a while. Ever since I've been out here in 2014, and, and my experience with the park train is it's always run okay, has good days and bad days, just like anybody that's 63 years old or at that point a little younger. But this past weekend, she finally had major problems and was not able to even climb the far hill. We had to have two of our other volunteers actually push her up the hill to give enough power to complete the ride with the, with the guests. We then tried another, another ride and at that point she was running so poorly we knew it was time. Ken called me up after the August the 3rd and he said, she's dead and she needs some help and told me the story and I said, okay, time is now, we gotta do something. Bill Bickley having the inspiration to make this happen and uh, eventually uh, there's a number of us that are gonna help make it happen financially, but it is a $6,000 project. We need help for sure. It's the right way to do it. I found a great friend out here and a great supporter in Ken Greenwood who he and I had a lot of love for Christine. He wanted safety and reliability, which we all do, but I wanted the original engine rebuilt and he thought about it and we discussed it a lot and he came around to, uh, to agree. And then I said, well, with that kind of support, I know we can make this happen. We had to pull the engine from the locomotive shell. This is to allow us to send it up to a shop up in St. Paul, Minnesota, industrial engine rebuilders. And Roger up there has been working on these for 40 years and knows what he's doing. The number of people that came over here from the museum uh, and even you know, other people, the customers that came to watch what we were doing. There was an excitement and an energy uh, about, hey, we're gonna get this little train fixed and we're gonna do it the right way. Uh, so a lot of volunteers stepped up, came out of nowhere to, to help us out to get that engine out and get it on its way. Our, we'll call him our chief mechanic here at the uh, museum, unfortunately, presently is in the hospital and couldn't be here, but he directed us from his hospital bed via FaceTime. Uh, we were able to FaceTime, look at different parts of the disassembly. He was able to make recommendations that without them, I don't know how we would have gotten her out. We'd probably still be here uh, frustratedly <laughs> yanking on things. So we had to, um and again, Donald says, you know, you're going to have to secure the, the, uh, the gearbox, the transmission, with a, with a different contraption. Separately. Separately. I, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a uh, mechanic by any means, but essentially a hoist to hold it in place and then find another set of straps and another, uh, we've got a tractor to lift the engine out. And, you know, this, uh, this thing is rated, I think, between 25 and 30 uh, horsepower, but it weighs like over 400 pounds. As we started to lift it, the engine caught on some of the front bulkhead. We then had to try to lower it down to clear that bulkhead, at which point it dropped way quicker than we were, were hoping it would, but it, again, it did not, not hurt anything. And that was a, a little, little touchy at times, but we got her out in one piece and didn't break anything and didn't hurt ourselves, which was even better. Until she was then sitting on a pallet, we were all a little tense because the last thing we wanted to do is see the engine drop and uh, ruin the engine and crush 
Christine's face. There's a couple of us that are stepping up to make sure that we had the, um, you know, the bank to, to get everybody comfortable that somehow th th this was going to We had the resources to make this happen. But I'll tell you, the, the best projects are the ones that are, are funded by, you know, grassroots, small amounts, families that come out here and ride it. Um, and I think that that, that to me is, is the right way to do it. And I, so I encourage people to go to the SRM website. There's a way to make a contribution. You push a button, I guess, and uh, you make a contribution. You designate somewhere on there. Uh, maybe we can give you more instructions, but you designate that this donation is specifically for the park train uh, restoration project, and you know that'll help us cover the cost. We need plenty other help. There is a place to donate on the website, and so if you go to the website, you can find that button and click on it. And uh, just think of. Christine's sad face when you look at it and you'll make you want to do this.